What is up everybody, I am Get Flanked, and I'm back with another Rainbow Six Siege Operation Void Edge tip video for you. This is actually the third in a series of videos that I'm doing for this channel. The first one was about the Oregon rework, the second one was about all the patch notes, and those videos will both be linked in the top right hand corner of the screen right now. If you haven't seen them, make sure you go check them out. In this video, we're going to be talking about the new defender coming with Operation Void Edge, that is Orcs. The goal of this video will be to not only provide you with an understanding of how Oryx works, but also to allow you to take that understanding and apply it in game. So we'll be covering specific situations that show how strong Oryx can be. We'll also be talking about how you can counter Oryx. So at the end of the day, after you watch this video, you won't be surprised the first time you play with or against Oryx in game. With that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into the five things that you need to know about Oryx. Okay, the first tip for orcs is actually four tips in one. So we're gonna divide it by 1A, 1B, 1C, and 1D. And it's gonna to have to do with the four different things that orcs can do with his gadget slash ability. And it's important you realize the difference. He can sprint just to move around the map faster. He can use his uh, dash to go through soft walls. Uh, he can use his dash to knock down opponents. And he can also climb up hatches. Let's first talk about that dash. And if you're only using that dash to move from point A to point B faster, it's pretty tough to misuse it uh, in that sense, okay? Now, keep in mind that when you are using it, you're making more noise, you're louder, so enemies will be able to hear you easier when you're using it. But other than that, it's pretty tough to misuse it. Um, keep in mind that it's really useful for evading enemies. Like, uh, that's gonna be a theme throughout this whole video. Orx is the master of getting a kill and then getting away without you know getting traded out by the enemy he's the master of evading enemies and this is a good tool for that you get a kill you use his sprint ability to move around the map faster uh, and decrease the likelihood that the enemies are going to be able to catch up with you and trade out uh, their teammate that you just killed now let's talk about using the dash to go through soft walls this is something that does have the potential to be overused, and uh, you probably already realized by now that when you do this, first of all, it completely depletes your inventory of dashes, and also it does 10 damage to you each time that you do it. You can actually down yourself by doing this if you are below 10 health. So uh, it definitely has the potential to uh, backfire if you use this in the wrong situation. Where I found this to be really useful is that once again in evading. So if you uh, get a kill, you can use this to go through a soft wall and then create a rotate immediately that the enemies aren't expecting and allow you to escape without going through one of the choke points that they may be holding down and expecting you to come through. And that's where it's really, really useful. Now you can also use the dash to go through soft walls and surprise enemies. If you have information that an enemy's in a room, you can use this to go through a soft wall, surprise the enemies and get kills. That does work, but it's a lot more risky because when you go through a wall, there's a period of time where you're vulnerable. You don't have your gun out, you're kind of stunned and it takes a while for you to get your gun back out and be able to fight back. So if the enemies are looking that direction and see you, you're probably going to be a really easy kill for them. Uh, so keep that in mind, but it does work from time to time to surprise enemies like that. Now let's talk about using the dash to stun enemies. Uh, there is very limited uses for this. It's really cool, don't get me wrong. Uh, it feels pretty cool to knock an enemy down, but unless it's a Montane, I don't really see the purpose in this. You would always be better off to just shoot the enemy. So uh, if you see a Monty, this can work to you know knock them down and get the kill easy. It's definitely a very hard counter to a Montane, but beyond that situation, it's really not that useful to be running into the enemies. You might as well just shoot them. Okay, now let's talk about the ability for orcs to go up hatches, and the primary purpose for using this is to pull off flanks and to evade. Um, I'll also say that you can use this to move about the map faster. Uh, if you need to go upstairs and you're not near uh, a staircase, then you can climb up a hatch. But just keep in mind, once again, you are vulnerable coming up the hatch. So you can go up a set of stairs with your sights up, ready to get into a gunfight. But when you climb up a hatch, you're vulnerable. So keep that in mind. But definitely really useful for pulling off flanks and uh, attacking enemies who uh, from a direction that they're not expecting. That's the primary purpose right there but also like you're seeing on the screen right now there are situations where you can get a kill and then use this ability to get out of an area uh with with without being vulnerable and it can be very useful in that situation as well 
Okay, the second thing you need to know about orcs is how to counter him. That way, if you find yourself playing against an orcs, you'll know how to handle the situation. The most effective counter I have found to orcs so far is a simple claymore. And I'm referring to his ability to come up hatches. The, the claymore counters that extremely well because if you place it correctly, it will go off as soon as he jumps up. Like, he doesn't even have a time to react um, if it's placed correctly. It'll just go off and instantly kill him, uh, which is actually different than an air jab. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit more about air jabs and orcs interactions in just a second. But uh, keep in mind when you're placing uh, the claymore on a hatch, try and place it on a hard part of the floor if that's an option, uh, because orcs will have soft destruction available. He'll be able to shoot a claymore out if you place it on a soft floor or something like that. Uh, and also try to place it where it's not going to be as visible uh, to the orcs if they're in a hurry or something like that. And uh, again, you'll find yourself getting really easy kills by doing this. Now, I mentioned that an air jab is an effective counter as well, but not quite as good of a, as a claymore because the claymore is going to kill the orcs. This is just going to let you know the orcs is coming. Uh, now, if you're in the position to get the kill, sure, it'll knock them down just like anybody else would with an air jab, and it would be an easy kill for you. But a lot of times, it's going to be an orcs rotating across the map trying to come up behind you. So it's going to alert you to their presence, which is always good, but not quite as strong as having a claymore on that hatch, in my opinion. Now, it should also be said that Gridlock's Track Stingers could be considered a counter to Orcs, not quite as strong as a Claymore or an Air Jab in my opinion, but if Orcs is trying to do his dash and runs into the tracks, it will stop him, slow him down, and do damage just like it would any other operator in the game. Okay, the third thing you need to know about Orcs has to do with going up hatches and the commands that you are given when going up hatches and you need to be able to read them quickly and understand what options are going to be available to you because you have two options in most situations okay you can see on the screen right there that when you are getting ready to go up a hatch you have the option to go up and just hang there or to hold and you actually climb the whole way up okay so there could be a situation where you just want to go up and hold and see and maybe look around up there and then drop back down so that's an option that's available to you also, you need to pay attention to this because there will be situations where there's an object blocking the hatch from a certain angle. So if you jump up, you're going to waste time because you'll just be able to jump up and hang there. You won't be able to climb the whole way up. And if that's your goal, you're going to waste valuable time. You're going to make noise. You're going to be vulnerable for longer. So make sure if your goal is to climb all the way up a hatch that you have both options available to you so you don't just get stuck hanging and um, you know wasting time because of that. Okay, the fourth thing that you need to know about Orcs is that Orcs and Valkyrie synergize together extremely well. If you can get a Valkyrie to work with you and place a black eye around or in the vicinity of a hatch that you want to rotate sometime in the future, then you are able to use that hatch and rotate up it knowing that it's clear. And that's a big deal because of how vulnerable Orcs is once again when he is going up hatches. Now, Orcs does have a bulletproof cam that he can use, but uh, what I've found so far is that enemies are very likely to destroy that as soon as they see it. Because keep in mind that you need the information above a hatch where you're not going to be and where you're planning to come later. So if the enemy sees that, they're very likely to get rid of that camera very early in the round. So having a Valkyrie place a black eye that's not as easily found uh, is a really big deal. And I think on the screen right now, you're seeing a perfect example of this. Um, we're playing on Clubhouse. We're defending the basement area here. Uh, the kitchen hatch is open. Maybe the attackers opened this uh, at some point in the round and we're probing it for a while, but I've now since rotated. Well, as the orcs, I can now get on the camera, see from the black eye that the kitchen is completely open and it's safe to come up this hatch and then pull off a flank on the main stairs as the enemy isn't paying attention to this direction anymore. And that's really where Oryx is strongest whenever he can pull off stuff like this. And Valkyrie can really assist him to let him know that it's clear to do so. Okay, for the fifth thing that you need to know about Oryx, it's more of a mindset type tip here. And if you look at what Oryx has available to him, he is built to be a very effective roamer. And there's a lot of different things you can do as a roamer to help your team win the round. One of those is obviously to go out and get early kills um, or to get kills in general. And Orcs is very good at that. But he also has a lot of tools available to him 
that will allow you to get out of sticky situations. So there may be times when playing as orcs where you get droned out or where the enemy thinks that they have you pinned down, but because of his ability to bash through a soft wall or go up a hatch, you actually have an escape route that you wouldn't with any other operator. So for some operators in that situation, you, your only choice might be to take a gunfight and maybe you win, maybe you lose. But with orcs, you might have other options. So just keep that in mind that sometimes with orcs, you have have more options than you would with any other operator and sometimes you can just live to fight another day instead of taking gunfights head on okay that is going to do it for the five things you need to know about orcs keep your eyes on this channel over the next few days for the fourth video in this series which will be five things you need to know about yana big shout out to ubisoft for letting me come on and do this i hope you enjoyed it and i will see you guys on the next one